Maybe it's magazines or movies, but it seems like we all have preconceived expectations or myths we hold in our mind and our heart about marriage. So whether you're going to get married or you are married, I challenge you today to go through these six myths and ask yourself how many of them you're holding. Today on Reaction Reset, we're talking about six marriage myths. Realistic expectations are crucial to a healthy marriage. And I don't know how it happens. Maybe it's from our parents, romantic comedies, all kinds of magazines, or what we read on social media, but we all are inundated with all these silly myths that we believe about what marriage should look like and be like if you're in it. So before you refuse to go on a second date because you don't have any hobbies or similarities or decide you're going to have a baby to try and save your marriage, let's go through these six myths now. Many people think you have to share similar hobbies or similar interests when you're married. I want to remind you that people who share similar interests, there's some good in it, but it can also become competitive. You can get so passionate about your interests that if you start doing them with your partner, you start one-upping and it can lead to a lot of unhappiness in your marriage. Let's say the two of you are big gamers and you love gaming. Well, you know what? When you get married as time goes on and you get busy at work and you have children, if you're still trying to game, you're going to be all the time frustrated. Or let's say you're doing all the work and your partner continues to be the gamer. Now you don't share those interests anymore. Now you become resentful. So I want to remind you, it's much better if you marry someone who is respectful of what you do or really is interested in it, but at the same time, that doesn't necessarily have to join you because it's good to keep your own interests so that that part of you continues to grow and change as you're married. Because let's not forget, the person you marry today is going to change. Let's do second myth. You should never go to bed angry. Listen, I've been married for a long time. If I never went to bed angry, I would never sleep. As a therapist, I can tell you that when couples get angry, there's a lot of emotion there. And sometimes it's really smart to take a break and to, so both sides can listen and then put a pause on it, do a time out and say, you know, let's, this is really important. Let's revisit this topic tomorrow. The only time you should not go to bed angry is if you're one of those couples who isn't good about discussing things and rather than deal with it and confront it head on, you try sweeping it under the rug. That is a no-no in marriages. So if you're one of those people, it's important that if you're going to go to bed without resolving it, that you actually schedule a date before you go to bed, a time when the two of you can bring up the discussion again and work it out. Third myth, if I help my spouse, they should always have my back and help me out when I need it. In a perfect world, this would be true, but it's a myth because it's not a perfect world. No marriage is 100% balanced, nor is any marriage 100% fair. You have times in your life where you're going to give more and your partner has times in their life where they're going to give more. Just because you do something that protects your partner or you help them out doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to do the same for you when you're in that situation. The big difference is that couples communicate differently. And so you may be married to someone who is very open and is able to tell you, I'm so stressed out, can you just help me? And you loving him or her will help out. But when you get overwhelmed, you may withdraw, you may go inside, you may not say 
anything to your partner, but you might start doing passive aggressive things like banging doors or doing the silent treatment. That makes it hard for your partner. They might not even know that you need their support. And then you may come back and say, you should have been able to see what was going on. Nobody reads your mind. So I would encourage you if you always want your partner to have your back, and even then you may not get it because life isn't like that, be sure that you're a good communicator and that you're able to tell your partner exactly what you need. When you do that, you're more likely for your partner to be there for you and have your back. The fourth one is that affairs are a common cause of divorce, maybe the most common cause. That's not true. First of all, as a clinical psychotherapist who deals with this issue, I'm going to tell you that in marriage, two-thirds of all couples who have had infidelity try to work it out, and they usually do work it out. It's not necessarily easy, but they do work it out. An affair is a symptom of too much distance, too much space. What causes that? Usually the couple has grown apart. They have lost the emotional intimacy. And when you lose that, it's very difficult to restore it. And so what, you ha what happens is because you have a void of that caring, that support, that ability to be vulnerable with someone, you displace that, you project it onto another person. The fifth myth is that happy couples never argue. Not true. Happy couples argue as much as unhappy couples. The difference is that unhappy couples, they hit below the belt. They start using insults. They start getting angry. They raise their voice. They, it's never going to be worked out. And the reason it's not going to be worked out or resolved is because unhappy couples have this sense that they need to win. Happy couples don't want to win. Happy couples want to understand. They want to be sure that when they tell their partner something, their partner understands. And so that means with happy couples, when they argue, they argue more fairly. They learn how to do that. If you want to give your marriage the best chance of lasting forever and being really a great relationship to be part of, then you want to take a course in conflict resolution. Because I don't care how happy you are, how much you love this person, marriages cause conflict. You cannot put two people who love each other into life and expect them never to argue. And finally, having kids will strengthen our marriage. I hate to burst this bubble, but having kids is stressful on a marriage. It's tough. And it's not the kids that make it so tough. What happens is when people have kids, they shift their priorities on to the kids. And what does that mean between you and your partner? You start losing an emotional and a physical connection. If you want to really make your marriage great and you want to have kids, then what you need to do is you need to have private time between the two parents, mom and dad, during the week. That means you have to focus more on date nights. No matter how stressed out you are feeling, you have to get dressed and you have to go out and you have to put your phone away and talk. You have to look at each other. It can't be something that you do once a month because you heard that date nights are great. Because if you even let once a month go by, you're going to find that there's so much distance already and all you want to talk about is the kids. There's a lot of myths and I could go on and on with marriage myths, but for to shorten that, what I'm going to say is that it is really important that the two of you stay committed, prioritize your marriage, and always, always, no matter how angry you are, turn toward each other. When two people are turned toward each other, looking and sharing the same vision, that is hard to break up. Remember, change your reaction, change your world.